Hello everybody and welcome to the episode 2 as we remake the original episodes of my antics and further explain how these methods can help you succeed at home. I'm here with my best friend today, Grass Pile. And me and Grass Pile are going to teach you how to use heat cords and heat mats to benefit your test tube queens and colonies to give them a boost in their growth. Let's take a look at the colony that we're going to be using for an example. Crematogaster are one of those awesome species that have a very fast egg to worker speed. Giving these girls more heat speeds them up, makes them more active and more adventurous, along with bringing more protein and carbohydrates back to the nest. It shows the queen that this is a great time to lay more eggs and quicken the growth of the colony as a whole. Along with the elements that you use, like heat and water, to grow your colony, there also comes the dangers. And in this instance, the danger is that you could overheat your colony. You could put the heat source too close to the water and come back to find there are giant droplets of water in with your colony. If there's too much heat, there's a possibility that all the water will evaporate and your colony could die of dehydration. Making sure and avoiding these things are very crucial when it comes to using heat sources to help your colonies grow. And to mention it before we talk about this is very important. Now then, when it comes to using heat mats, you're always going to want to find a way to edge your colony on it. You never want the heat source itself to be too close to the middle of the test tube or the water source because that will cause um, uh, evaporation of the water. Matter of fact, think of your test tube as a parked car with all of the windows up. Now obviously, if anybody's ever been in a hot car before, you know how quick that the heat rises when you put the windows up on a hot sunny day. So think about them as the same. You want to give them just enough heat where it warms up part of the test tube, but you don't want that heat overwhelming the test tube either. Of course, in all elements, you cannot leave your ants out of the light and they need a dark, warm space with quiet. You could go ahead and put your ants in a box. Make sure they won't roll around. Um, I'm using a Miantix anti-roll test tube holder, but in your case, you could use a piece of tape. Um, whatever, just make sure they don't roll around when you pick them up or, or accidentally. And after that, you could put the, uh, the top on. And then you edge it over the heat source. Uh, for this example, we will take the top off, but you're gonna want them in the dark for most of the time. Now what we're trying to aim for is to make sure, even though they're in this box, um, that the test tube has a heated area and a cooler area as well. And because they're in a box, the box cardboard will actually deter some of the heat, which will make sure that they don't get too hot if they do get close by accident. You're going to have to monitor them over the next couple of days. Watch where they put the brood. If you see them push all of the brood and push all of the workers and queen towards this water, you know it's too hot and it's too much heat. The same rules apply for a heat cord as well. To give my final thoughts, using heat for your queens, young colonies, mature colonies, ginormous colonies is a great and wonderful thing. A benefit 
to make sure that your colonies are always warm and the brood has a way to grow. But as we mentioned, even when it comes to nests, if they don't have moisture in the nest, that heat can be negative. So you want to make sure you monitor your nest, be on top of your ants, and overall, make sure you do the very best you can to succeed. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. More will be coming out soon, and I can't wait to see you all next time. Peace.